Welcome to the show where we go back and we revisit Mike's top six most viewed videos to review the top five products. This is already stupid. Why is it top six and then top five? This is confusing to my viewers. It's confusing to my viewers. Sorry, viewer. We're gonna go look at the top six most viewed videos and Mike's gonna tell you where those products are now. Now, I'm the host, I'm Michael Text It Out, back for yet another video. Wow, this year end has been great for me. It really is not that great. They only pay me $3 an hour. It's ridiculous. But you have to make the best of whatever hosting duties you get. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Let's find out what our number five most popular video was. I'm gonna open this magical envelope to reveal number five. It's the Ecobee 4 in the video titled Ecobee 4 Impressions, colon, why I chose it over a Nest thermostat. Uh, go ahead, Mike, and tell us how that Ecobee is doing. All right, so first up, we got my good old friend, the Ecobee thermostat, which is still in use, obviously. So this thing has been awesome. Kind of going back to that old video is not awesome. First of all, there's like 800 comments. It's not literally 800, but a bunch of comments about how bad the music was. And I agree. I don't know what I was doing with the music at the time. I just didn't know how to like put background music in. It was like too loud and the beat wasn't that good. It was like an old song that I did. And I was just like, I'm gonna just throw this in the background, just the instrumental. Today, as we check it out. trash it was like slightly offbeat everyone was annoyed by it someone made a comment about the thermostats too close to the tv even though that these like newer tvs don't put off as much heat it could still throw off the temperature and that's fine i'm just gonna say now like i'm not good enough with electrical to move a thermostat i can hook up a thermostat but this ain't moving like this is where it is it actually is helpful you know maybe someone might want to do that if they have it close to the tv but uh this is where the house thermostat was that i replaced and it ain't going nowhere for now. So it's been fine. We actually don't watch TV that much downstairs. Plus there's a big difference. There's like a four to five degree difference sometimes between the downstairs temperature and the upstairs temperature, especially around this time of year. So it's not really gonna matter that much in my circumstances. But yeah, I don't really use the smart features as much as I thought I would, other than the fact that I can go on the app and see what temperature it is and change the temperature, but I don't use like the voice assistant because the big reason I got this was because it integrated with HomeKit and it worked with the Echo, which I used at the time. I've since dumped that whole ecosystem, but I'm still glad that it works with the iPhone and HomeKit so I can still get my use out of it. I actually have a widget set up on the home screen now along with the actual temperature outside. So that way I can know like what the outside temperature is and what the temperature is inside the house. Because sometimes, you know, especially here in Virginia where the weather just changes dramatically, like... I think today it was like 48 degrees and then randomly on Christmas it was like 69 degrees and then you know we have our thermostat set to heat and I'm up in here burning up and I'm like what's going on so pretty much I use it for the widgets the interface is pretty cool the echo in here has been disabled for a while even before I dumped Amazon I just found that it was limited in a lot of ways it wasn't that loud it didn't really fully integrate with the whole echo ecosystem either so that's been disabled for a while but it's a smart thermostat is really good there was an incident where I actually removed it briefly because we had someone come out because our AC kept causing the thermostat to power off because basically it was overfilling and it was hitting the trip switch. We already looked it up before we called the HVAC company and they tried to blame the thermostats. I put my old thermostat back on the one that came with the house, which was actually brand new when we got the house. They replaced the whole HVAC system, including the thermostat. And then we still had the same issue, surprise, surprise. And then they tried to say like, well, since we didn't install the thermostat, then we got to charge you for coming back out. I went with a different company who immediately identified the issue and was like, yeah, it's your, your thing's backing up and it's hitting the float switch. And I was like, that's what I thought because it makes sense because it hits the float switch and the powers the whole unit off. Anyway, <laughs> that wasn't really an issue with the thermostat. The thermostat itself has been awesome. I definitely still recommend it. Ecobee has really good thermostats. Also, it's super useful to have the upstairs temperature as well. So that's that. It's still an awesome thermostat. And also, it's so Christmassy in here, so it's, it's the day after Christmas I'm filming this. So don't come after me. Don't come after me for the tree. Wow, it seems like, unlike that beat, that eco be hot. <laughs> now we're going to move on to our number four pick. 
G will occur, whatever could it be? Time for a magical envelope to find out. So number four is, oh wow, it's the iPhone 12 leather case. In the video title, they actually improved it, exclamation mark, iPhone 12 leather case unboxing. Mike, go ahead and tell us how that's going. So I did an unboxing video for the iPhone leather cases. This is actually a year later. This is the yellow, this is Jeff's case, and then this is the brown, this is my case. So Jeff actually hasn't used his case nearly as much as mine. If you look at the edges on his, they're not nearly as worn down as my edges are, or uh, patina, as they like to say. The backs look the same, so I was kind of disappointed. Like, this is a little bit darker, but it's not nearly as dark as the sides, and this has been over a year. His, he has scratches on, like a deep scratch right here. I think it looks kind of cool, though. I still like these cases a lot, but yeah, as far as, like, the patina, the iPhone 11 leather case that I had definitely patinaed a lot more. Of course, I didn't do an iPhone 13 <laughs> leather case video because I didn't get an iPhone 13 this year. But for people that are curious of how these cases are doing, yeah, they're, they're okay. They look okay. I just wish that this would hurry up and darken up. I know there are ways to make it darker. <laughs> I'm just not trying to take sandpaper and stuff to my phone case just for a look. So that's where they are right now after a year. I did end up finding a video about these cases, someone that actually specializes in leather and basically he was saying how the coating on these cases are gonna make it really difficult for them to patina and that does seem to be the case. No pun intended. <laughs> this, let's just move to the next thing. Move to the next thing. Gee willikers, it sounds like that patina could have been Mina. Okay. But we're not going to let it get us down because we're back with our magical envelope again. We're about to find out what the number three most popular video slash product is in the Mike Text It Out channel. Oh wow, it is the Taco Bell Xbox One X. From the video titled, I want an Xbox One X at Taco Bell. Let's see what's going on with that. Does this guy even try with this title? like, really? What are we doing here? Oh, you're supposed to cut cut to the cut to Mike. Ah, that was over dramatic. Gotta make sure my mic's still plugged in. All right, so the Xbox One X that I went at Taco Bell is actually here in the bedroom. I have not used it nearly as much as I should, but to be fair, when I got it, it was already like close to the end of the Xbox One's life cycle. I already had the Xbox One. Then I traded that in for the 1S. And then once I won this one, I actually just sold my 1S to somebody. So this was like my third Xbox already. And I'd already played most of the stuff that I wanted to play on it. And anything that came out that was new, that was also on PC, I just played it on PC. So it's not like I wasn't playing Xbox games. It's just my PC was better than the Xbox One X. So I just never really played it that much. It's one of those things though that's just cool to have. Like it still was an amazing moment for me when I won that Xbox, cause I was just like, oh, this is super weird. Like I really did not expect to win. So I just feel like I can never get rid of it. I know someone asked me, they DM me on Facebook for the Mike Tech Set Out page and asked if I would be willing to sell it. And I was like, we'll see once the Series X comes out. But even with the Series X downstairs, that's just some something undoubtedly cool about the Xbox. One X to talk about this and especially this, it makes the sound. It's classic, I just, I don't know. But yeah, it's still a really powerful system. I mean, you know, it's not like they're stopped making Xbox One games. So I'm gonna try to use it as much as I can while I have it. It's been neglected and I feel bad about it, but that's where my Xbox One is safely nestled behind this TV that's way too large for my room. So if you watched my recent videos, I upgraded to the 2020 OLED, which has been a nightmare. It's been fine since we got it fixed, thankfully, but the whole process was a nightmare, but our old 55 inch moved into the bedroom and it's like way too big for this room. Like it's, it's ridiculous. It really should not be in a room this small. This is like four by three. It's not that small, but still a pretty small room. It should definitely not be in here, but we have it in here. And I was like, with the second OLED in here, I definitely want a gaming console just to play games while, you know, maybe I'm going to bed or something like that. And I'm laying in bed, I wanna play something. That hasn't happened, but I'm still optimistic about it. On to the next one. 
Oh geez, Xbox, more like X not. <laughs> this number two is actually a tie because it features the same product. Luckily we have our magical envelope here to tell us what that product is. And it is the Acer XF270H gaming monitor. From these two well-titled videos, the most popular being the Acer XF270H unboxing and assembly. Followed by the Acer XF270H monitor review. I'm gonna kick it over to Mike where he's gonna tell you all about where it is now. All right, so we're here with the Acer XF270H. So like I mentioned earlier, this monitor actually encompassed two videos, but that's not true. It was actually encompassed three videos. It's just the other videos, not in my top five. So this monitor has made a few trips around the house. It's been around. As far as the unboxing video, I think that was fine. It was just unboxing assembly. I like that video when I go back to it. The review, I was still very early in the review thing, still trying to get my process down. I mean, honestly, every time I do a review, I change the way that I do it a little bit. So I still haven't got it down, but I just don't feel like it was like the best review. However, I still leave it all my old videos up because if I was proud enough to release it at the time, then I'm just gonna stand by it. And it's not like I don't stand by the stuff I said in the review. I just feel like if I did it now, it would go way more in depth than what I did at the time. So I kind of hate the review video a little bit. It wasn't my strongest effort. I just didn't know how to review things. I wasn't as good at it at the time, but that's a part of YouTube. That's a part of learning the process and getting better. So hopefully I'm better now than I was back then. Anyway, this is a 1080p, 27 inch, 144 hertz monitor. Right now it's actually being used on the arcade, which I'm actually gonna do a follow-up video on because I've made a lot of changes. This was not the monitor that was originally used in the first video I did on this arcade, or technically it's an arcade stick, but I call it an arcade because it's pretty much what we, we use it as, an arcade. So <laughs> it's migrated here. The other video that I was talking about earlier was actually the treadmill video where I was like the ultimate Apple TV plus setup or whatever. So this monitor, after I was done with it, with my computer, because I upgraded monitors last year, I got a 1440p 32 inch and then another 4K 32 inch for video editing. So this kind of was in a closet for a little bit, then I used it for the treadmill. But when we upgraded our TV downstairs, we ended up moving that big one to the bedroom, like I mentioned earlier in the Xbox section of the video. So we took our bedroom TV and moved it over to the treadmill, which is literally right there, which is my point over here. <laughs> moved it over to the treadmill. And so I took this monitor and stuck it on the arcade. The monitor that was on the arcade, Jeff is actually using it as a second monitor for work that it was like a small, older 24 inch monitor. So it was actually small enough to fit on his desk because he has that Ikea desk that has like the closed in section for the monitor. And he already had a 34 inch there, but he was able to squeeze an extra 24 inch right beside it. I don't know how, but he managed to make it fit. So yes, this is what it's being used for now. Like, no, I don't need a 144 hertz monitor for an arcade, but it looks a lot better than the monitor that we had here. The colors and everything pop more. And you know what? Maybe I will play some games eventually up here that maybe can take advantage of the higher refresh rate. So I'd rather still have it be used for gaming than used on my treadmill. That did feel like kind of a waste. It was, it was a waste. So I'm glad that it's being used for this. On to the next one. Oh geez, well at least only the review was basic and not the monitor. Wow, it's been such a long journey. We're finally at our number one. It's time for that magic envelope to come through one more time so we can find out what the number one product slash video is on Mike Text It Out. And number one is the NZXT H510 from the video. I should be able to remember these trash titles off the top of my head. NZXT H510 Unboxing and Impressions. Such a catchy title. Go on, Mike, and tell them about this thing. Computer case, whatever. I don't even care at this point. I'm getting paid. All right, last but not least, technically number one video on my channel still is the unboxing for the case behind me, the NZXT H510. And it's actually held up really well. So I was a little bit concerned about the airflow when we first got it because it just has that small vent on the side and then at the bottom to take in air and that's it. But at least with this configuration with the i7-8700 and the 
1080 Ti. It's been perfectly fine. Now, the video, probably one of the most embarrassing videos as far as like making dumb mistakes. So looking back on it, and there's been a bunch of comments about this, <laughs> I actually put the graphics card in the wrong slot. So this was the first time that I actually dealt with a higher end motherboard. So I did have it before this video, obviously. And before I put the graphics card in the top slot, but when I got the new case, I was like, oh, this kind of looks better in the bottom slot. Now thinking about like the fact that it does technically affect performance. And then also this was the first time I dealt with the extension cables. I'm gonna tell you the story about my stupidity for the, that whole thing. Originally, when I built the computer, I recorded most of it and then I sped it up and I got to the end of it and I decided not to use the extension cables because I didn't realize they were extension cables. I was like, oh, they don't fit. And then I thought about it like a few hours later and I was like, wait a minute, this says extension cables. I guess I'm supposed to plug it into the cable because I'm an idiot. <laughs> this is literally the first time I used extension cables and I watched other videos where extension cables were used, but for some reason it didn't dawn on me in my mind that they're extension cables, like they're supposed to extend the cable. I don't know, I don't know. So I figured that out. And then I was having a big issue with the cable combs. Like I could got, not get them to work right. Again, because I'm stupid. I went back like a month or so later. I actually left it the way it was for a while with the cables looking all crazy. But I went back a month later and I finally figured out how cable combs work. Yay me. So yeah, it was just my first time really using extension cables. Uh, also, I didn't notice that there was like the hole in the bottom to put the cables through. So I just routed them around the side. It was a whole mess. People in the comments really helped me out on that video. So I really do thank you. Again, I don't really pull videos. That was embarrassing. I mean, it's my most viewed video and I made some stupid mistakes, but also it was never intended to be like a build video. I just thought it would be cool to have like a montage of me building the computer in the video. But yeah, the video was more so about like the unboxing experience and then my impressions on like the airflow of the case and stuff. So even though I made the mistakes, I still feel like the video itself is valid for what I was talking about. It wasn't really supposed to be the focus of the video. It was just like dumb on my part. As far as the GPU, now this guy had the most comments. It was like, hey, you idiot, you put the GPU in the bottom slot. And then the funny thing was I was just like putting the computer back together and I was like, did I have this on the top slot or bottom slot? Like I said, I didn't think about performance implications. People were like, you're gonna choke the GPU because it's too close to the bottom. It was actually fine. I actually left it that way for like a year because Jeff liked it better that way. Eventually when I went and redid it, I was like, I should probably move it. So the airflow will be a little bit better, but it's not like that big of a deal. Depending on your motherboard, this motherboard, there really wasn't a big performance difference when I moved it from the bottom to the top. The airflow, of course, was a little bit better. I'm not saying that you should put it at the bottom, but it depends on your motherboard whether you're gonna have a performance hit or not. And it also depends on the graphics card, like how power efficient it is, how much heat it outputs basically, whether it's gonna really like choke it or anything like that. So it was fine. I could have left it like that. Like I said, I stayed like that for like a whole year. I actually liked the way it looked a little bit better in the bottom slot. That's just me. I'm not one of those people that like, if I lose a few frames of performance, then I'm going to trip about it or anything like that. And neither is Jeff. And this is technically his computer. He really didn't care or even notice a difference when I moved it. So yeah. So technically, yes, I was still wrong in that situation. I still don't recommend people putting it in the bottom slot, but in some cases it really doesn't matter that much. So yeah, that was the whole story behind the mess that ended up being the original build of this computer. But now it's all fixed up and lovely and beautiful, I think. Oh, another thing. So a lot of people ask me what light strip it was that I used in the computer. It was like a magnetic light strip that I got off of Amazon for like 15 bucks. At the time, it's actually been discontinued, but <laughs> it actually completely died after like a year or so. Don't recommend that. Uh... Just do your research and find a light strip. It was nothing special. Uh, you know, I've linked a few people to it, but yeah, it's completely dead. It ended up dying, but yeah, it's still in the case. I've just been too lazy to remove it, but yeah, it died. But yeah, this case is pretty good. Even when it's gotten dusty and, you know, I needed to pull the filters out and clean it, I haven't had any major performance issues. It looks really nice. Like, I really like the way this case looks and how much space there is inside. So yeah, it's still a great case after all this time. There's an old crusty <laughs> Blu-ray player on the top of it because we're ripping our Blu-ray collection in case anybody was wondering. But yeah, 
great case, regretful decisions made in the video, but that's life and you learn and you move on and you go cry a little bit in the corner, which I'm gonna go do now. Oh wow, what an adventure we had today. We live on Mike's trauma, I mean, top five, six videos, whatever this thing was. Am I getting paid? I'm still getting paid, okay. Wow, that was great. <laughs> ah. Everyone give a round of applause for some of you. Wow, that's gonna conclude this year, 2021. Hopefully you'll be back next year. I mean, after this, I don't see why you would come back, but I guess if you watch Mike's videos, then you already know what the deal is, so. It's up to you, I mean, you know, it's your experience in life. This is what you're choosing to do. The subscribe or not subscribe and return and watch the videos. So good luck with the rest of your life.